Now, the second one, and again, this is a very common operation that we do, is getting parameters. So we select an element, and then we're going to get a parameter. So we're either going to use that parameter to filter a list, or we're going to use that parameter uh, because we want to output it to something else, or we want to use it to populate you know, another parameter somewhere else. So we have uh, those options. But it's real easy to get parameters from Dynamo. And there's kind of two types of parameters, right, that we want to get. We can either get type parameters, uh, in particular if it's a family instance or a systems family, uh, or we can get the instance parameters themselves. And to do this, we're going to use, actually, I'm going to move my watch node. Oops, let me get rid of that. I'm going to move my watch node over here. And let's connect it as an output. Actually, I do want to mention, too, the way that I group things, let me ungroup. Um, it's all by right clicking. So I'm going to highlight all of these nodes. I just draw a window around them, right click, and create group. And then I can double click here to give it a name. So let's go get type parameters. And then if I right click again, I can choose a color. And I do like to try to color code them based on uh, what it is that it's doing so that I can easily identify groups of nodes that are doing the same thing. And I know that uh, I know some firms have developed color, like color standards. Um, in terms of if you know if the script is doing this or if that group is doing this, it should be this color. I've tried that, and there's always you know there's always an exception to the rule. So I I try to things that are on the left hand side of the script. I try to use one of the colors that is closer to the left, and then as I move over, I choose a color that's a little bit over to the right. That's kind of my my standard, such as it is. So getting type parameters and getting instance parameters are basically, they're very, very similar. We're going to use a node here called element get parameter value by name. And this node has two inputs, one for the element. So what is the thing that we want to get the parameter value from? And then the second thing is the parameter name itself. Now, these nodes are in the Revit library under elements. And then we go down to element. And so inside of Revit elements element, we'll find get parameter value by name here. And I can just click on it in the library, and it's going to show up right on my script. And I can just delete it. Now, to provide the parameter name, there's a couple ways I can do it. The easiest way that I like is if you just double click in empty space on the script, it will create a code block. And a code block is kind of a generic node that I can enter numbers in, I can type text, and I can, there's uh, I can, a language called design script that I can do directly in the code block. So I usually use it to do numbers and text. I can also do a string node, which is a text node. So if I click on that, this is basically the same thing except it's specific to text. Now I like to use a code block because I can do multiple strings, if you will, multiple text lines. Um, whereas if I did this using a string node, I'd need to do three different string nodes. So it's entirely up to you. Same thing with numbers, I can do an integer node. And that's one thing with Dynamo. Um, I'll show you the number slider in a second. That's my one of my favorite nodes. But one thing with Dynamo is that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of ways that you can skin the cat. So you can do things pretty easily um, a multiple different ways. So Howard, you're asking the different numbers. You know, that's a good question. I think um, the, there's green pluses. So you'll see that a lot of the nodes are color coded almost and they're grouped. So the question is, the question mark nodes will return I think it's if you're interrogating an element. So it will get the bounding box, for example, from an element or the curves or the faces. Uh, the plus you know, I take that back. I honestly don't know. It's not consistent because get location is kind of similar from getting the bounding box. I'll have to look that up. There is a logic to how the nodes get grouped. I just don't know it off the top of my head. So I'll find out and uh, and let you know. I would assume sometimes the plus, you'd think that it was actually, okay, here, I highlighted over it. Plus will create anything with a question mark is a query. And there's some other... Uh, anything with the lightning bolt is in action. So it all depends on how that library is created and structured. 
Yes, that's right, Travis. If you hover over it, it will tell you what that symbol, that icon is. Cool, good to know. Learned that today. So getting parameters, all I have to do if I want to get an instance parameter by name is just plug in the actual uh, element or the list of elements. So for example, let's say we want to get, we have our get all by category. I'm going to just connect that. So we're getting all of our rooms and I'm going to plug that into the element input. And actually I'm going to do it three times here because I have this set up for three. And the parameters I'm getting are the room number, the room level, and the room area. So all this node is going to output are the values of those parameters for each of the rooms. So I'm going to click run. And you'll see here I have this level name node. And I, I leave that there sometimes because depending on the element, the output is either going to be the name of the object or, or it's going to be the object itself. And I found that um, with levels, depending on the object, and we'll do this with doors and you'll see the difference. In this case, let me hover over here and we can see we're getting all of our, these are all of our room numbers. And you can see too that they're not in kind of sequential order. They're in the order in which they were created. So here's our list of room numbers. Here is the second one here is our levels. So if I hover over that, this is actually giving me the level name, not the actual level object. Uh, and depending on what you're going to do, you may want the level object or you may want uh, the level name. So I added this here. I've had scripts in the past where I was would get an error because I would be getting the level name and not the level object, and I'd have to convert it. So there's some inconsistencies between, you know, between what the node actually outputs. So our last one here is then our area. So here is the output of the area for all of those. So that's actually really easy. All we have to do is plug that list of elements in, and then we're good to go. Now, if I want to get the type parameters, I can do that as well. But what I have to do first is I have to get the element type from the element. So if I want to get, let's say I want to get doors and I want to get the height and width of each door, I know the height and width property is part of the door type. So I have to use an element.element .element type node to get the type and then I can get the parameters from the type. So another thing to note, if you right click on any node, I can go down to help. And this gives me some information about what that node does. And also it tells me where that element comes from. So this element, the element.element .element type node is found in the revit.elements.element .element library. So if I go revit.elements, oops, here we go, elements. Dot, well, let's go down to element. I will find this element type node right here. So it, that's sometimes useful to, if you're looking for a particular node and you just want to know where it's found, uh, that's a good way to be able to do that. And that's just right click, help. And you can get some additional information uh, about the node. So for instance, if we, let's say we want to get all of our, our door information, our door height and width, I'm going to change my category here to doors. And I'm going to connect that here. I'm going to disconnect these guys because they're going to, they don't have uh, the same parameters here as a room. So I'm going to zoom in and let's just give that a run. And it's going to take a second to chug through that. And here we go. We got some information out of here. So I have my watch node set up. So now I can see my door height for each of the door instances based on its type right here. Some of them are actually coming out. You can see that. Let me zoom in. They're, they're blank values, so that door type, for whatever reason, it's probably a curtain wall door, doesn't actually have a height parameter. And I can do the same thing if I hover over here, I can get my door, see my door widths as well. So these are two ways if you want to get type parameters. Again, if you, oh, sorry, if you want to get parameters, you can either get it from the type or directly from the instance. And you just need to know where that parameter resides. And the only difference between these two is if you're, Getting the elements, you need to get the type, and then you can get the parameters from the type.